Yes, my name is Kevin Tangestall, and I'm 55 years old, living here in Bismarck, North Dakota, and I identify as a gay male. My service dates were with the United States Navy, and I served from December 1986 to March of 1988, and I was an E3 when I was discharged. When I was in the Navy, I was relatively new to the whole gay identity, and I really didn't know exactly who I was, what I was, whatever. And I knew that it would probably be against military standards, so I really kept it all to myself, even though there was one guy, a bunkmate, who sexually harass me on a daily basis and being a younger serviceman I didn't know how to respond or anything like that so I just kept quiet pretty much. So as far as my discharge status it's an honorable discharge. Um, I was home on leave doing harp duty assisting the area recruiters in February of 88 and while I was home on leave I hooked up with a guy who sexually assaulted me and I ended up in the ER and the doctor uh, convinced me to file a police report despite my misgivings and everything and the police reassured me the Navy would never find out and when I got back to my ship the USS England uh, not long after the chaplain called me to his office and stated that the local police department, the Minot Police Department, had contacted the captain of the ship with the report. And so for quote unquote my safety is why they did, decided was that it would be best to start immediate discharge proceedings which first included two weeks in their psych ward and then once that was completed I was given an honorable discharge via administrative separation due to personality disorder for the convenience of the government with no chance of re-enlistment. For close to 30 years I really downplayed my veteran status because uh, there were a couple of life opportunities that I believed had been canceled because I believed that the term homosexuality was in my discharge paperwork and so that's why I always you know just downplayed my veteran status because I didn't think anything I, that I qualified for anything and in um, late 2017, I was let go from a job of 14 years and a VA friend of mine told me that I needed to get in contact with our county VSO. And so this talk had met with him and going over the paperwork and the discharge and everything. And he asked me, if I had ever received compensation for the discharge or for the assault or counseling or anything and I had absolutely no clue so he started the paperwork on all that taking down my story and I eventually did qualify for PTSD MST disability and so I asked him if homosexuality was in my discharge paperwork or anything and he looked through everything and he says no absolutely not so <laughs> for 30 odd years I've been downplaying my veteran status but so now it's a new lease on life I guess <laughs> it's important for Americans it's citizens to understand the military experience of LGBT service members because we have a story just like everybody else. Um, 
We experience the military in a completely different manner. Even though that we are serving under their, you know, open service and everything, there's still that strong bias against gay service members. And especially recently with uh, regarding transgender service members, how much bias is served against them. So yeah, the I believe American citizens would benefit from knowing stories from veterans or active service members who are, who identify as LGBTQ. Acknowledge that we are the same, we are, we deserve the exact same treatment and respect and dignity as other service members and when we share our story with them, you know, approach it with an openness and an understanding because that's what I had really experienced with my county VSO. I wasn't exactly sure how to broach any of my history with the VA, but he was just so understanding and compassionate and throughout the interview he would periodically ask me if I needed to take a break or anything like that so yeah it's just that simple act kind act of understanding <laughs>